Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am uh, Yori Folani. My guest this morning is Bingal Motosho. Uh, Mr. Motosho is the Honorable Commissioner for Information uh, and Strategy. Let's add that bit too and strategy in Lagos State. A fine morning to you, Benga. Good morning. And thank you very much uh, for making the time. Because, um, well, there's something to talk about. As you, uh, I, I say it, even though I don't need to say it, but we're in the full-blown political season now, campaign season. And, um, uh, well, <laughs> it, it has been heard from uh, some political opponents, contestants for the upcoming uh, governorship election. Um, it, it has been heard that, as a matter of fact, what has Governor Sanwolu done uh, in uh, Lagos? Uh, no doubt you would have heard that. Now, if you're living in Lagos, if anybody is living in Lagos, uh, I guess he wouldn't put that uh, kind of a question. But in a political season, uh, people will probably hear it. Uh, but still, to check out all sides of the story, how uh, you wouldn't agree, you wouldn't agree that Governor Sanwulu and his team haven't done anything uh, noteworthy in Lagos. Uh, let me just take it from my own point of view. Go back to the COVID when he was commander in chief in Lagos State Health Sector. He led that sector, and um, that was a global thing. And I think he got global commentary. I'm just looking at just that alone. Sanwulu and his team. The way they handle, I think it even got presidential, uh, a presidential nod and everybody was. But it's, it's more than that. And you're the commissioner, not me. Uh, so you, uh, you, you probably don't come along with that statement of you guys have not done very much uh, from, from your competitors <laughs> at the polls. <laughs> well, uh, I thank you for that uh, question. Uh, I reply such uh, questions in two ways. Number one, people are free to say whatever <laughs> they want to say. Especially it's a democracy. It's, uh, it's the season, you know, that people say whatever they like. But then, there's a Yoruba proverb that I usually uh, apply in this kind of situation. The proverb says that uh, no matter how good a hunter you are, you cannot kill a big game in the view of your opponent. If you say, look at the small right he has killed and he's calling it an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But talking about performance, I think Mr. Abayde Sonwolu, the governor of Lagos State, his deputy, Dr. Kadri Obafemi Amzad, they have killed not a rat, but <laughs> a very big elephant. If you look at uh, the condition of things when Mr. Sonwolu came in and what we have today, if you want to talk about uh, roads, for example, we have done about 970 roads. The Public Works Corporation has done about uh, 450 uh, roads that uh, 650 inner roads that it has uh, uh, fixed so far. We have done like uh, 15 bridges. We have done uh, 31 roads uh, in Ojokoro SEDA network of roads. We have done uh, in uh, 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 34 roads in um, Koshofe, in uh, uh, Lagos, uh, Victoria Island, in Ikoyi, and um, all over uh, Shomolu. Mm -hmm. So everybody who applies uh, this uh, road. No, anybody who applies this road will know that uh, the government has really been up and doing. And uh, in the area of um, all other things that you can see, mm. the, the, the bridges that are spoken of, the Teddy Moore Bridge, the uh, uh, Penn Cinema Bridge, and so many of them that uh, have been done. We've been able to reduce uh, traffic by doing the roundabout uh, reconfiguration Today, if you go to Allen Avenue, it's no longer it as it used place. to be. It if you go it to Maryland, it's no longer as it used to be. Let's like around about one and two. We have reconfigured them. They are now very broad, very expansive, and uh, traffic is uh, moving all over that place. L let me ask you something. Um, you, you know, all of these are indeed the way they are. But then your, uh, your opponents, your political opponents, um, some, of, some of them say that, uh, but in any case, it's like walking to a script. It's not as if there's any fresh thinking. Um, uh, it, it, the, the plan has been there, uh, going back possibly two or three administrations. And so in some way, that is a reason for them to try and take the shine off that. First of all, how do you even adjudge that very notion that 
It's not as if anything has been done. It's like on Jiwe you know, it is, it's, it's there. And so it's like anybody could perform in that kind of a um, milieu. What yeah, do I, I do not that? see anybody wants to build a house that will not, first of all, consult an architect. If you do not do that, or you leave an architect, after leaving the architect, you forget about the structural engineer. Mm. Everything has a faces, everything has a plan. So what you are talking about in Lagos, yeah, Mr. Abayde Sonwul has just released uh, a 30-year development plan okay. for Lagos State. Okay. So if you are talking about that and the kind of plan that uh, people like uh, Ashwa Jubola and Metinubu uh, put in place in Lagos State and that uh, the master plan that we are following as a government, mm -hmm. I do not think there's anything wrong in that. Okay. Or if somebody who has come before Mr. Abayde Sonwul did uh, a project and didn't complete it, and Mr. Abayde Sonwul is completing it, well, it's taxpayers' money at work. And um, besides that, it's, uh, government is a continuum. You cannot say you are stopping here and then you are forgetting about everything that your predecessors have done and then you want to reinvent the wheel. Okay. You can't reinvent the wheel. Mm, mm, you know? mm, so mm. people saying that but, but, uh, maybe we have to... And besides, there are so, so, so many new projects that Mr. Abayi Desan will have started from the beginning and is going to complete. Okay. Even, uh, even in this particular dispensation, uh, uh, there are some, as it were, fresh projects beyond the master plan that will be completed by the end of his first tenure? Sure. Take, for example, the red line that we are talking about. When people talk about a railway in Lagos, uh, or, or even all over the world, Lagos is the only subnational that is building a railway without, uh, you know, federal assistance. He's uh, taking it from his uh, balance sheet to build it. And apart from that, Mr. Baide Sonwolu on the uh, 15th of August 2021 started the red line. And he promised on that day that the project will be finished by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of God, from the schedule that we have seen, it's going to be finished by the end of this year. And Mr. Baide Sonwolu is going to commission it and is going to test run it, and is going to put it in passenger operations by the first quarter of next year. Okay. The red line is a 37 kilometer uh, line that will start from uh, Marina all the way to Agbado. The first phase now from Moyimbo to Agbado is uh, uh, on, and uh, it's going to be completed, like I said, by the end of this year. And then. Um, it's going to be moving about half a million passengers. A day. I was going to ask and that, that combined about how many passengers will be taken off the road, so to speak, now taken over by, by the rail system and therefore easing tension on the roads. About, but you just mentioned the figure about a half a million Lagosians. Yes, we'll be, be, applying the, 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 we'll be, we'll be using the community through the red line from Agbado all the way down to Oyimbo in the first phase and the second phase all the way down to Marina. And like I have said, People are saying that uh, we didn't start anything. And, uh, this red line, I mean, the first of its class is going to be the fastest intracity line in Africa, started by Mr. Baide Sonwulu, and it's going to complete it. We are building about five overpasses, not as so that vehicles and uh, trains, they will not be able to be competing for the road. Mm -hmm. We are building overpasses in uh, Yaba, Oyibo, in Mushi, in uh, Ikeja, and then uh, Agege. Pen cinema. So, if anybody is saying that, uh, what is it that is uh, government has done? We are proud of that. We are okay. going to show that, and uh, the whole world will see it. Uh, and the so blue line is also going to be ready at the same time. The, that one, the good line. The blue, blue uh, line. Oh, the, that, the blue uh, line. Okay. They'll be taking passengers all the way from uh, uh, Marina down to Mile 2 in the first phase, the second phase, all the way down to Kukumaiko. And that one too is going to be moving about uh, 1 million passengers. And uh, it's going to be, that, that journey is going to be taking like uh, 25 minutes. The one that the red line will be doing from uh, Oyimbo to Agbado is about uh, three hours now of uh, sweating, of uh, all manner of uh, discomfort. But today, uh, as soon as the red line comes on board, it's going to be taking like uh, 35 minutes for you to travel from Agbado all the way to Oyimbo. Uh, and this one, uh, and all of this is going to be brought on stream from uh, the first quarter of next year. First quarter, but, but, but at the end of this year, they will be test run. Uh, yes, of yes test running will, beginning, uh, mm -hmm. will begin. And then all other things being equal, uh, by the first quarter, uh, Lagosians will be in yet another phase of... Uh, you know, quite frankly, being the, is it the pace setter state 
or the center of excellence. It's the center of excellence, it's and uh, but maybe Mr. Bajide son who doesn't want to be called his excellency. But everything he has done has shown excellence. <laughs> and so we are proud uh, from, of from, from the way, uh, well, th this, uh, quite frankly, you know, uh, when you look at the pictures that you're seeing, this is about infrastructural development in Lagos, and uh, there you go. Uh, all of those were part of the test running. Uh, and then since we're here, uh, and um, in the area of transportation, a heck of a lot is being done because there's so many people to move in right. uh, Lagos State. Um, bearing in mind our own particular configuration, still staying on transport, uh, when you look at the roads, you sort of get it uh, with the modeways that are now, you know, uh, de uh, defunct, de extinct. Um, our people travel with a lot of load. Our people, our, our women folk, our men folk, but especially our women folk, um, who, who they, they're trying to get their goods to right. the market. Are these trains, because trains, uh, cargo trains are different. Passenger trains are different. Uh, what kind of trains are these, bearing in mind that peculiarity of our people, so that we don't end up with pictures we see from India where there are people on top of the train. Even in Lagos, in Yaba, back in the day, we used to see people riding on the roof of trains. <laughs> well, these are passenger trains. The way they are even uh, configured, they are configured as uh, luxury trains. Very comfortable. And now, Lagos is trying to make them to conform to what we have there. We have, like you have observed, millions and millions of people to move every day in Lagos. So the trains have been configured to fit what we have here. So whatever our people are talking about in terms of movement, mm -hmm. moving their goods, moving their uh, passengers, it, and whatever. All of this has this been figured be, out. They will be well serviced. OK. Mm -hmm. So I mean, because um, we, I, I'm just taking the model we have of back the so-called mass transit of then, when you know it is sometimes if you can't, uh, OK, you pay for that extra seat, because that's where you put your uh, widow if you are bringing it from the farm. You know, if you're bringing your widow from the farm, and you must get to it up to the market by, by before 6 o'clock. Um, but you're saying this is different. It's all been figured out. Everything figured out. And what you had in those days now just add comfort to it. So whatever you are doing in all those, uh, on all those trains in those days, you can have more here in a more comfortable atmosphere. The mm. kind of uh, commuting that the pits yeah, yeah, negotiate. Yeah, yeah. And it's the, no stress, the no, no, go no stress, slow, no, no go slow, no, no nothing. Even in payment, you have to use cowry card. The cowry card that our people are using on the waterways now, the cowry card that they are using for BRT buses. So they will be able to use the card on the trains. So everything is going to you know, give you comfort as uh, passengers. And the kind of, uh, like I said, comfort that uh, Lagosians uh, deserve than that uh, Mr. Biden all the things that they should get. So you, you, you probably feel that this is going to be a very, very tough act to follow. So if anybody is hoping that to go to the electorate and try and wrest uh, power uh, from the ruling party, well, he, he, he has a job on his hands. Now, I think so, because they just, the Goshans are very discerning people. They are very knowledgeable people. They are people who give kudos to whoever deserves uh, kudos. And I think uh, they've been praising Mr. Wade Sanwolu, who himself feels that, uh, oh, I'm not going to rest on my horse, and I will continue to uh, do things that will impress Lagosians and that will make me to leave uh, uh, a, a kind of a legacy for posterity, so that when people begin to talk about uh, governance in Lagos, they will say, Mr. Wade Sanwolu, the 15th governor of Lagos State, mm -hmm did this, did that. Okay. And like I have said, it's going to be on record that uh, Mr. Wade Sonwolu started the red line and completed it. You know, all of this costs money. And that, that takes me to uh, this whole matter of revenue and, um, you know, internal generated revenue. It's been on the up and up. Other states might well be looking in a sort of, a, a sort of well, you know, I mean, there's no way you won't notice that Lagos is bounds ahead and uh, many people attribute that to a number of factors, not least of which is that it also has the resources to pursue some of these projects. Um, has the revenue base of Lagos uh, improved? Of course, the revenue base of Lagos uh, is, uh, is improving because uh, we have been creative about it. 
And because Lagosians too, they are highly cooperative people who want to, because they have seen what Mr. Governor is doing with the money, mm. and they wish that they could contribute more. I've seen Sometimes people, I see these little signs on the roads, your taxpayer money working or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Some of our people, the contractors, they put okay. it there to encourage people to pay taxes. I've been on a taxi car before, and the driver was uh, asking me how he could pay his uh, tax that time in driving on the road that his vehicles no longer uh, break down the way they used to break down. And because of that, he will want to contribute his own culture, no matter how small. And I asked him that uh, he has to go to LRS to uh, uh, obtain the form and then uh, be able to pay uh, whatever he, he wants to pay. You don't have to uh, put your children in our schools before you uh, begin to, they ask you to, uh, for tax papers or whatever. We don't do that. You just, uh, most Lagosians, they pay out of their own volition, mm -hmm. not because they are being forced to, because they have seen what the government has been able to do with the money. So I, I feel that, uh, well, uh, talking about uh, money, Lagos can still have uh, more. We, 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 there, there is room for improvement in what we are doing. Of course, of but, course. But uh, we are not uh, going down. Because Lagos, uh, I usually tell people, is a victim of its own success. <laughs> if you have a, 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 a city that about 6,000 people are coming in almost uh, daily, uh, there is no way, there is no amount of money you have that may be enough. You still and need to be creative about your financing. That's a statistic that you work with. About 6,000 people arrive Lagos Correct. every day. Correct. And they, they As move. an improvement to their lives. And uh, uh, over, we've moved. over 60% I'm now in Lagos. of them don't leave. They just come in. Here. And that is why Lagos State government and, and, and is saying... About 6,000 come in. Uh, yes, and over 60% of them, they don't leave. They don't leave. They just disappear <laughs> into the state. And that is why Lagos State government is saying that uh, we are not asking people not to come in. We do not have such powers legally. Mm -hmm. Constitutionally, people can come into Lagos. But if you want to come into Lagos and stay beyond three months, come and take Lagos State uh, residence card so that we'll be able to have your data, so that we'll be able to account for you, so that whenever we have any problem, such as we had during the COVID-19 uh, calamity, we will be able to cater for you, and then we'll be able to know the number of roads uh, for us to construct, we'll be able to know the number of schools for us to build, we'll be able to know uh, even, you know, the, the health care system that we need to get for the number of uh, people that we are getting. So, but so far, so good people are complying, taking the Lagos resident card, but we can do more because you have a city of about uh, 25 million people. You, you know, this city, and Lagos is, it, it, the, 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 um, the, the landmass is fixed. Uh, there's hardly anywhere to expand to, but up. Yes, you can expand up. Mm. I imagine that uh, as things improve, maybe it won't be strange to be seeing uh, Lagos becoming the high-rise capital of, of, of the country. Right, uh, right. Uh, you know, yeah. because yeah, you yeah, still yeah, have right. to want mm. to continue to expand, but there's no room to expand. Yeah, to... Lagos is uh, Nigeria's uh, smallest uh, uh, state. It's about 3,324 square uh, kilometers. And then uh, of this uh, small size, 25% is uh, water. So we have that challenge of uh, land. So like you have said, the private sector... Uh, people, they are interested in uh, housing projects in Lagos. Mr. Baide Snowulu has tried since he came in. He has uh, done about uh, 18 uh, uh, housing projects. And uh, as I speak with you now, he is uh, somewhere in uh, Surulere opening another housing project uh, today, built by Lagos State Development and Property Corporation. And uh, we, we have done like uh, 16 that are ready that people are occupying in Ibeche, in Ibogbo, in Igondo, in uh, Idale, Badagri, in uh, Ipmori, Surulere, in Shangote Do, in Leki, for one, Leki two. Oh, so cool. the houses for Lagos homes, I mean, they are just there for the, you know, masses to go and uh, occupy. And the high market uh, uh, houses being built by uh, uh, Lagos State Development and Property Corporation, those ones are, you know, the elite people like uh, Mr. Yori Folani can go in there <laughs> and buy some. You know, I wish. You know. I wish. <laughs> but, you know, any way you look at it, it's, 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 it's highly noteworthy. You can't, mm. uh, you are the person who started off with uh, the Yoruba this morning, so I don't know if I can try one myself, haven't mm. seen these pictures. Uh, okay. I, 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 I
Baba Rini. <laughs> this, you know, mm -hmm. I, maybe you can now explain that one. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what I'm saying is that uh, <laughs> if you look at uh, Aussie, for example, yes, I mean, you cannot see all the things that Mr. Baide Son Olu and uh, Dr. Kadio Bafemi Amsad administration has done, and then you will say they have not tried. Yes. They have done. But I tell you that these are just. Uh, uh, the ones that you have seen. There are others that are coming up. In the coming days, you are going to be commissioning more housing projects in uh, uh, Odonosa, in uh, uh, Bagada here. But Those ones to, are ready. Wait, Benga, let, me, let me throw this one at you. They say all of these things. It is legations, civil servants, public servants, that they get all of these things. Contrary to the idealistic attitude of, it's for the people. We're doing this. Understand that. Civil servants allegedly corner it all, and then, or at least, you know, all we are Yoruba people, there will be exaggerations, not, not all, but a significant part of it is cornered, and uh, therefore, you're still keeping the power and the wealth and the better life in a very tight circle, and they then begin to dispense second-handedly. You must have heard now, I, I've heard the I've heard so shumors, but... I tell you, when you talk about the uh, Lagos homes and all the other projects, it is uh, impossible. Okay. There was a day that uh, a, a colleague, a former colleague of mine, a journalist, came to my office to say he wanted to thank me because he got allocation of a Lagos home. And I said I knew nothing about it. <laughs> he thought I influenced it. And then every time we have a, a housing project, uh, Mr. Baide Sonwulu has made it mandatory that 20% of the allocation must go to workers. Okay. So you see okay. workers, so, uh, people never believe who own homes, mm -hmm. you know, having 20% of all these uh, housing projects okay. in Lagos. It's like... So the uh, mass is too. If you... A, a, like a positive discrimination sort of a thing, like a positive one in the sense that uh, just the way some parties do with their women folk. Say, look, don't let everybody compete. A certain percentage of offices are reserved for females. And in this case, we're saying that Certain regular people that ordinarily, if it was Naira for Naira, might not get a look in. Sure. These people will be assured a certain percentage yes. where they, you know. Yes, workers, yes. 20%. Workers. The Nigeria Labor Congress, the Trade Union Congress, they press for this. And Mr. Sanolu said there is no need to press it. It used to be 10%, it just increased it to 20%. So the masses, the workers who are fighting for masses and who are representative for the masses, they have access to these housing units, not that uh, the kind of uh, projects that uh, billionaires can come from anywhere mm -hmm. and just and buy everything on the shelf and everybody will just be looking at them and then they will begin to let out to the masses who cannot even pay for them. So, I mean, you can see them beautiful homes, nice environment. They are now occupied by people who never thought they could own houses. We have had so many you know, testimonies of uh, people who have said that uh, they never knew that they could get uh, these allocations. In, in fact, know. even sitting down here and watching these pictures there uh, with Governor Sonwulu and his deputy just uh, uh, behind him, I'm looking, I mean, quite frankly, those, all, all of those pictures, it's like, I'm even, a bit, I'm even a bit surprised myself, even, even as I uh, live in Lagos. And mm. yeah, there are other aspects to Lagos. Naturally, these are selected pictures, edited, well, of course. Um, so in that connection, uh, I wanted to ask what it is like in the real Lagos, so to speak. Yes, when we work like this, of course, it behoves us to you know, make pictures and show people, but it, I wish it were... 95% of what Lagos looks like, but it isn't. Lagos is still a work in progress. Of course. It is still, I, I have uh, said Lagos is a city, a state of uh, about uh, 25 million people. You don't expect government to be able to provide this kind of uh, housing units for everybody All coming in, especially when you don't have their data. People just come in, they see Lagos as their Canaan land, they see Lagos uh, as the land that is uh, flowing with the uh, milk and honey. Mm. And then they want to come in and then uh, take a slice of uh, the goodies for themselves. But for government, it's a very difficult thing to plan because you don't have the data. People just come in and you can't stop them. So if you say, our wish is that the whole of Lagos should be like this. But I'm telling you, like you have said, Lagos is still work in progress. Mm. And that is why year in, year out, 
we draw up plans of what to do, we draw up plans of uh, what we need to do to make our people live in comfortable uh, environment, in uh, very beautiful houses, in uh, homes that uh, befit uh, people who are proudly being called Lagosians. You know, you, you, you look at this housing development, and that's where we're at for a moment. Uh, just saw something in my goodwill there, but uh, that one has to be back. Um, uh, the next thing you think about in terms of uh, an improvement of the quality of life of the ordinary person uh, is security. Right. That's very important because you've got this kind of, uh, this is the stuff of dreams, uh, but you just want, you, you want to be safe. You want to be, you want to know that you're sure you, you, you can move around. You can. Uh, hello. How? Uh, oh, uh, hello. Uh, uh, good morning. It, that sounds like uh, uh, Madam Ada. Ada calling, from Joss. Yes, Ada calling in from Joss. Good yes, morning. Sir, good morning. So you are the commissioner. Then. Yes, 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 um, yes. I must confess that Lagos is actually setting the pace as regards infrastructure de development. That is uh, with, uh, actually with the courtesy of uh, Ashiwaji Bolatribu's blueprint, you know, that when he was there. I think he was the one that laid that foundation. I'm happy for that. So, but the greatest challenge uh, Lagos is confronted with is the traffic jam. Honestly, it makes me sick. I get crazy when I come there. So I pray a time will come when um, somebody, I don't know, the governor or whoever, we may have this breakthrough. Make sure they open up all the other uh, channels of I mean, uh, transportation so that it will be, uh, I mean, uh, stress free for somebody to apply the route in, in Lagos. Okay. Well, uh, were, were you with us from the beginning? Because uh, Gwenga was explaining how the rail systems are going to be. You know, moving. I think between half a million and one point five million. Yeah, uh, taking yeah, it I, off. I, the I heard him. I heard him. Oh, I heard him. But oh. what I'm saying is that I hope it will come to fruition. You know. Oh. Hope, okay. You know, he has, he has said so. But you hoping know, that it's, it's not it's, just it's, political speak. Yes, yeah, not just political speak. That's what I'm saying because that is the. I don't know how you put live in that Lagos. So. You know, those of us who don't live when we come there, what that for? It's terrible. <laughs> you know, that stress can it's something one's life span. You understand? It's terrible, I must tell you. I can't, I don't know, I don't know. I can't, I can't live there, except if where I'm going to work. Is, is, is that my vicinity? How can you say in a traffic jam seven hours, eight hours? What the hell? All oh. the time, let's not deal with Nigeria. But what, all I want to say here is that even though uh, Shaul has done well, you know, most of the governors are doing well, but my prayer is that please and please let them allow the electorate to decide on who will become the governor. It might, it, it might still be him, but let us not behave as if we are in a military regime, forcing people to vote, you know, no, no, or not allow people to come out because you think they are not going to vote, uh, vote for you. It shouldn't be so. Let all the minds be open. You know, if your work has, uh, what you have done, let it speak for you. And people will vote for you freely. Let's not give up on this country. It shall be well. Lord, I did man. That's my closing remark. Indeed. Thank you very much. You've developed this payoff, uh, Ada, and it's been working as far as I'm concerned in the last, uh, what, at least maybe eight weeks now. Uh, ending up with oh, um, So uh, she said she heard it, but uh, she heard when you when because we had spoken about taking pressure off uh, the the roads, um, and she said yes, yeah, she heard it, but she just hopes it's not the usual political speak of politicians. Of course, uh, everybody who lives in Lagos can see that uh, Mr. Abide Sonwolu is uh, damn too serious about the rail project. Because we believe that uh, the rail will take pressure off the road, and that uh, if you are driving all the way from uh, Agbado to the island, that you do not need to drive your car anymore. You do not need to even go and join buses that will be stopping from one uh, uh, bus stop to another. That now you have uh, an alternative which is faster, which is more comfortable, which is secure, which is, uh, you know, the dream of everybody Indeed. to be able to make your appointments at the right time. And I believe that is what the rail system is going to be doing in Lagos. And apart from that, many Lagosians now use the waterways. I was going to go Because there. they have seen that the waterway is safe, Because I was going secure. to ask the, the, the situation there. You just told us, you've given us some figures to give us some sort of perspective into what shall be happening then, the pressure that should be taking off the road. Um, uh, how about if you were to turn your mind to the waterways too? The, the, What's the, the capacity the, the, there? The, the, the waterways, you can see that many more Lagosians are taking the waterways. And that is why Mr. Baide has done everything to encourage... I didn't know that fact. To what you just said. Yeah. Many more are actually using the yeah, waterways. Yeah, they are actually using the waterways now. 
I think about uh, by six months ago, about half a million, half a million Lagosians have used the waterways. By the time Mr. Baides and Oulu came in, we had uh, just uh, seven uh, boats and ferries, you know, carrying people. Today we have 21. And more and more people are using the waterways. And we are building 15 jetties to complement this. 15 jetties uh, in Toomu, in uh, mm -hmm. Badagri, mm -hmm. VIP Charlotte. What, 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 in, what state uh, of completion? Jede. Are you looking like a... Are you looking at 50% completion rate? About 80% about completion rate for all these jetties. In uh, Liverpool, in uh, Maitu, in uh, uh, Ikorodu, in Itoomu, in Ofi, in uh, Ipeche, and so many other places. So we, we have about 15 of them that we are building and that uh, they are almost all completed, over 90 percent completed. And you know, you know, just before we quickly go on break, uh, this all these things they're saying, uh, it reminds me about the, um, uh, the the rail system again. Take someone like me from my village in Abeguta. You can just do a train in, right. a train into Lagos, right. and then take over from there. There are all sorts of rails, there are all sorts of lines. You can just switch. Very much like we hear that is done. Overseas. Overseas. Right. You know, you look at the grid, the rail grid, mm -hmm. you take the one that you got out of that one, mm -hmm. go into another one. Um, so even neighboring states to Lagos. Correct. Actually Ag Agbado is in uh, Ogun State. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I'm not complaining about that. Arguably, <laughs> 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 you would say that he has an easy job in the sense that uh, ground just full, yafo, yafo, of things that he could talk about. Um, but <laughs> nevertheless, uh, when, when you come in, there will still be uh, some questions. Uh, questions about development, because that's what we're looking at now, talking about infrastructural development. But there are other areas, uh, education, for instance. Um, I just, because everything, quite frankly, we're talking security, but educational development is also key. Uh, how, how well is Lagos doing? When I say how well, I mean according to uh, the roadmap that you would have set for educational development. Because um, you, you have so many Lagosians uh, who have studied in Lagos that are world-class scholars. Uh, that tradition died down or whatever uh, for a while. Uh, is it any better now? Is education, yeah, are there plans for education in Lagos State? Well, uh, when Mr. Baide Sonwolu came in, he told us clearly that uh, education and health will be prioritized in his uh, program. And uh, he has continued to do that. One second, please. Forgive me for interrupting you. Uh, Mazi uh, Okoroafo uh, in Arochuku. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Commissioner. Yes. Commissioner, you see, I want to also look at this issue of uh, this uh, Napa brand of electric cars. I think there is need for Lagos to have such a project so that this issue of this traffic gridlock to look into it is the Napa brand of that electric car. Because I'm looking at it because if you if you look at Lagos, we know that uh, when you so when you are coming into Lagos from Ibadan, you see that this is Lagos. But others say you see that welcome to Arnold, welcome to Agas, welcome to Ibadan. But this one is this is Lagos. This is the only state that we see this is the Lagos. I think there is need to introduce something. And this issue of this plastic. You see, look at the scenario like this COP twenty seven going on now in Egypt about talking about the climate change. A lot of rubber. It's plastic rubbers everywhere. In church. It's, it's not, not only in Lagos. What is the government doing? Because if you look at the capacity, that's the, the, the demographic nature of Lagos. You have enough of that. At least uh, Tanzania, Uganda, they are using it to produce rock, carpet. I think I'm suggesting Lagos to look into such a project. Uh, Thank uh, you very much. Uh, uh, okay. Thank you very much. Um, if I didn't, if I understood Mazi. I think he's talking about uh, upcycling, uh, that kind of thing with polyethylene bags. Uh, as we know, you've told us consistently over the time that are uh, not biodegradable, so it's a hazard in itself. And is it possible for these things to be upscaled, that is to say, transformed into another? Uh, yeah, we are, we are working asset? with uh, the private sector. A couple of companies have come in to talk about uh, recycling in Lagos State, and. Uh, we are working on that, and because it's uh, something that we are trying to do. The refuse generated in Yeah, waste to wet. We are the, uh, the Loma is doing a lot about that. We now have a Loma Academy. It's part of the things that uh, they, they, they are thinking about uh, with uh, the private sector. 
we have uh, had uh, companies coming in from overseas and local companies uh, here in Nigeria saying that uh, they could turn uh, the waste about uh, uh, 6,000 metric tons uh, but they, they could turn it into wet for us. So they are working on that. What okay. is going on? on so that. The, mm. sort of, you know, before we, uh, the, we had to go to the uh, phone call, uh, you're talking about education and you were just about to say that, look, when Sanwolu came on board, yeah. he said, well, and that is where I think I interrupted When Mr. Baide Sanwolu, the governor, uh, Monte de Sadu, he made it clear that he was going to prioritize education and that uh, budget after budget, education has got in a, a very big uh, a slice of uh, the uh, budgetary cake. Uh, but, and that has shown. By the time Mr. Abayde Sonwolu came in, we had about 36% or 38% passing West African Council Certificate Examination. Today, uh, I'm happy to say that uh, we have about 82% percentage. Our aim is to see that uh, all uh, uh, candidates of Lagos State who go in for this kind of exam, that uh, they do well so that we can have a hundred percent pass. Uh, our teachers, I mean, the last uh, uh, teacher of the year that mm -hmm. the federal government uh, named is uh, our own teacher here in Lagos. The runner-up is also our own teacher here in Lagos. Then when you talk about an average Lagos State pupil now in primary school, primary one to three, can speak good English and write good English now because of the kind of investment we have put into what we call ECOSL. ECOSL is uh, a program under which we are putting technology into the hands of our teachers. Mm -hmm. And uh, about uh, 18,000 teachers have been trained under this uh, uh, program. And they are being able to uh, use technology to teach in their classrooms. And all of the curricula you have in one school is what you have across the state. Everything that they do is uh, uniform. And then about uh, 450,000 of our puppies have been given uh, tablets to aid them in their learning under this uh, administration of Mr. Baide Sonwolu. And that one, you know, it has uh, caused a kind of revolution. You meet an average Lagos uh, puppy now, and then you are surprised about his knowledge, you are surprised about his uh, skills. And besides that, we are building comprehensive schools. We have our students who have been out of school to go and learn a trade, can come back to school and at the same time still learn a trade. On October 19, recently, yeah. we uh, commissioned 15 brand new schools. I mean, this is uh, exemplary. It's uh, something that is uh, unprecedented. 15 brand new schools uh, in, in one day. Our school in uh, Agege Vetland uh, uh, School is a school that is uh, an iconic school yeah. with a touch screen. Uh, 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 the blackboard is a school built uh, with containers, and it's the first of its kind, like they are say in West Africa, it's containers it's that people will ordinarily indeed, throw away. St staying on schools, my mind just went to those uh, with special needs, like schools for the blind, schools for the deaf. I, 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 I feel sure that Lagos won't be leaving those ones out as well. Of course, there is no facility that we are built in Lagos, either a school or housing project that you don't have room for people who are living with disability. Yeah, the things that will make their movement uh, seamless, things that will make them to be able to fulfill their skills in uh, so many other places. Even in our civil service, we have uh, so hundreds of them okay. who are there. So whatever we do, we have consideration for them because they are special people. You they know? have special needs and they mm -hmm. are special people. And um, what you seem to be saying is that uh, Within the whole general education infrastructure, um, uh, they are not, uh, as it were, shut out. It's not necessarily that you have specialist schools where the only people or the only students that will be here would be um, those that are either blind or hard of hearing. That's, that's they, not They are necessary. well catered for in everything that we are doing okay, in but education. They don't need their own specialist schools where you have to, like the partially school for the blind. Back the, the partially day, school for the blind and some other ones that we have around there in collaboration with the state government to ensure that uh, their students don't uh, suffer what they, uh, they, they, they may suffer because of uh, their special needs, mm. you know. Okay. So, so all, all of that is uh, on, on track then. 970 roads, you said. Yeah. Uh, you, 
You were talking about the uh, Echo SL. That SL is what? The, the SLN for... Oh, 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 oh Echo XL. Yes. yes. Okay, and now, 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 now I get you. Um, the funny part to me is that when we talk, uh, when we talk like this, and especially with government officials uh, in Lagos, uh, look at all these um, uh, brilliant pictures that we'll be seeing. And um, then a Lagos, a, 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 a Lagos official will say that, you know, it's not even where we want to be. You know, we, this is not, uh, we are impressive, uh, but then you hear them say something like, uh, would you believe that we, not just the governor, but we ourselves, we are not satisfied. We want yeah, we to can't be satisfied because we, Lagos, satisfied. Uh, we, we do not compare Lagos with uh, other states in Nigeria. We compare ourselves with uh, other cities around okay. the world that have uh, really done well okay. for them. City of New York. Because it's a mega city. London. Those are the places that uh, we compare ourselves with. But like you said the other time, you were talking about uh, funding our projects. Mm. It's a big challenge. People believe that Lagos is rich. But if you consider all of the things that Lagos State government is doing, especially under Mr. Bayadeson, you know that uh, what we are earning in terms of uh, funding, we can do better. I mean, our budget is... Uh, uh, somebody said the other day that it's not uh, up to the budget of the fire service in, uh, in, uh, uh -huh. in New York. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, whereas the kind of uh, emergencies that we face here in Lagos, too, they are comparable to what uh, others are, uh, are facing. Indeed. If you look at COVID-19, for example, we had to bring out the best in our creativity and then um, put our best foot forward by, you know, trying to, by, by doing the incident command system and making the governor the uh, incident commander and uh, the commissioner for uh, uh, health and all the other people who, who stood firm at that time. But now the world is seeing that uh, the way Lagos State tackled COVID-19 is the way that kind of challenge to be tackled. Not just because uh, we, 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 we spent uh, money, but because we were able to rally the private sector. We were able to rally our health workers. We were able to rally ordinary Lagosians who knew where we were going, that we needed to fight uh, this calamity that touched the fallen humanity, and, and that we had good leadership to lead us in that fight. And now Lagos is an example of how emergencies like COVID-19 will be fought. You know, Gus, you were talking about, um, uh, not, you said the governor spoke uh, when, uh, when coming on board that education and health. And, right. uh, you know, I, I think I was, was it when the governor was presenting the budget, he was, he, he went into an area about, you know, another Massey Children's Hospital needs to be coming up. And indeed, right. plan, uh, plans are in the works for that. Right. Because uh, that's, Massey is like a world famous uh, children's hospital. But yeah. you, 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 you're looking to top that, right? Yeah, the, the Massey Street uh, Children's Hospital is... Uh, famously called uh, the baby factory. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, where uh, people of, uh, who have become <laughs> giants today, where they, 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 yeah. they were born. And uh, the hospital is uh, being uh, rebuilt because it can no longer cope. It's uh, over 100 years old. And now we are building the new Massey Street Hospital. And uh, the contractors are on site. It's being built. It's one of the projects that Mr. Bideson would, would love to complete. Uh, by, by, by the grace of God, when the Goshians uh, relighting. And it's going to be the biggest pediatric hospital, if not in the whole of Africa, in the whole of uh, West Africa by the time it is uh, finished. And uh, it's uh, from uh, the, the picture that I have seen, it's an architectural masterpiece. And it's the kind of hospital that uh, befits uh, the Goshians, you know, and it's going to be complemented by what we have uh, done in the modern and child care centers, hospitals that we have in Perth, uh, that we have uh, in Badagri, that we have in Igondo, that we have in uh, 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 Tiosa. But do, mm. Is there anything that you have not done? Because from the beginning of this program, it's about things we're doing, have done, we're doing, have done. Uh, where are those ones that you haven't touched? I mean, there are so many <laughs> things. Like I, I, I've told you, the like Ligotians who are talking about uh, the the traffic situation. Okay. <laughs> uh, that uh, I mean, one caller uh, spoke about uh, how, in our own view, out of his being coming into Lagos and commuting. And I said that that is why we are building the rail system. That is why we are doing everything to improve uh, the 
waterways. But if you look at uh, the, 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 the uh, density of uh, Lagos, the, the, the number of people who will be coming to Lagos and the kind uh, number of cars that we have in Lagos, about uh, 5 million cars in this uh, small uh, uh, space in other parts of, uh, uh, of uh, Nigeria, where the average number of cars is about, uh, you know, in hundreds, Lagos, we talk in millions. So it's not, and everybody wants to be on the road at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's not out of place for you to have a, a traffic congestion. But it's not that traffic congestion is something that is exclusive to Lagos. It's, uh, the, yeah. it's in the character it's of global, big cities yes. like Lagos. Uh, if you go to New York, you go to Chicago, you go to Mexico, you go to some of these uh, big cities. Even in London, you see these uh, uh, traffic jams. Uh, but uh, what we are doing in Lagos is, uh, by the time Mr. Sonwolu came in and I, we, it was identified that uh, there were uh, 60 graphic, graphic uh, gridlocks, you know, and I, I, I tell you, we have done about o over 40 of uh, these uh, gridlocks, and uh, uh, over 40% of them have been addressed. Indeed. And, uh, and yeah. this is where you... And go, you that is why you have Alene Avelu. There are areas in today. Lagos, I beg your pardon for interrupting you, mm. there are areas in Lagos as you... Uh, that you've been used to plying, and then suddenly you see that, oh, you can't make a left here anymore. So it's, it's, it's like it's blocked, you have to go further down. Uh, this, no doubt, must be part of the reviewing the city, the grids, the roads, and deciding what is not efficient and making it more efficient uh, in terms of traffic gridlocks. Uh, the the Ministry of Transportation has experts who are looking at uh, all of these things every day. I Lagos see. is uh, described by people now as a one big, massive uh, construction site. There's no way you can have a construction site and you won't have traffic uh, management. What we are doing uh, about the red line, for example, around the Keja here, and where we are building overpasses, like I said, Oyimbo, Yaba, Oyimbo, uh, Mushin, uh, Agege, and it's uh, not out of place to have uh, traffic uh, jams in okay. all these areas, okay. but it is how the jams have been managed mm -hmm. that uh, you and that's talk, what I was you saying, the, the about. roads seem to so, be being yeah. redesigned. Yeah, so we, we are, it is all in the name of traffic management by the experts who are in the Ministry of Transportation and who are looking at this every time. You know, but like, like I have said, Lagos, because of its, uh, you know, being a victim of its own success, people are coming mm. in, driving mm. in, uh, being ferried in, all of the time. But there is no way people won't have in. congestion. Who, but this congestion that we are talking about too, uh, apart from the fact that it's not exclusive to Rome, it is not all over Lagos. It depends on where you are going to and at a particular time. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. That um, no. uh, The efficiency on the road, I, I think uh, technology is going to take um, its own share of it because um, you, you, you people use technology. Uh, I think the days are long gone when some VIO officer is running after anybody. Now it's been computerized. There are cameras all over the place. Maybe we could talk about cameras and the security implication of cameras. But we're talking about it for uh, traffic right now. You're watching some uh, foreign uh, documentaries, and you see that uh, facilities that were put in place for efficient traffic actually can sometimes aid police investigations. Right. Simply by reviewing uh, uh, all all of those uh, all of those things. But the point I was making is that um, uh, the comp uh, it has become digital now. Uh, the technology. Uh, cameras all over the place. If your papers are, you know, out of date, they will know, and you will get a notification. Right. All of these are part of, you know, again being. They're part of what we call the smart city project that we are trying to build in Lagos. You will have seen people uh, drilling the ground and then uh, laying uh, uh, cables That's right. of uh, various colors all over Lagos. Mm. It's a uh, part of uh, our smart city project, which is about 6,000 kilometers of uh, fiber optic cable that we are laying. Mm. The first phase is uh, 3,000 kilometers, and uh, it's over 90% completed. And when it's completed, we are going to have faster internet. We are going to have cameras as part of that uh, 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 project, that system that you are talking about. And we are going then, to then have be more cameras because there are cameras yeah, up there, right there, now. Yeah, there, there will be more cameras. Okay. There will be more cameras. So it's going to be easy for you to commit a crime <laughs> somewhere in Lagos and be able to get away without being detected. It will be easy for you to get detected when you're the kind of thing that you are seeing where coup papers uh, expire. It will be easy for law enforcement uh, agencies to be able to do their jobs without being physical. 
you know, and so many other things. You know, in terms of technology, it's going to hit faster internet, it's going to all of the mobile phone companies that you are seeing and all the others, they don't need to come and mount their own infrastructure. They just need to just uh, plug into what we are doing and then they'll be able to do their business. Indeed, and um, uh, the point was made, I think I had the commissioner for budgets uh, in here. Do you have such an office? Uh, is there a commissioner for budgets? Yeah. Uh, is, I'm getting it right. Yes. But he was explaining that this... this economic planning and budget. Economic planning and budget. Uh, the commissioner, the Honorable Commissioner was here too, mm. and he was explaining that um, uh, even though the budget for, of Lagos this time is less than that of last year, but he was explaining the strategic implication of that, that things that were done then. So we're all going back to the thinking and forward, you know, looking uh, aspect of Lagos. Uh, at the time, things were done that could not, that if you wanted to do now, you'd be using maybe three, four, five times as much. But those things were done. So when Lagos now is presenting a budget that is just lower than the one of last, it's all strategic and it's all for the gain of the public. And that, that I was impressed with that. Yeah, it's because, like they were looking uh, into the future and know that, look, do it now, do it now, mm -hmm. do it now. In mm -hmm. the two years, who knew that the dollar was going to be a thousand naira or whatever they're saying about? Correct. Some of the road contracts that we awarded three years ago, today we can no longer award such contracts at this price at which we awarded them three years ago. In any case, it's not even only Lagos, all over the place, contractors are coming back asking for a review of a contract uh, sums, <laughs> you know. So the, the, the inflation that is all over the world is also affecting us uh, in Nigeria here. And um, well, we, 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 we've used up our time, but I still, I, I get the impression that uh, you guys are not winding down, uh, you're not chilling. It's like you're still going, work is still, uh, <laughs> Uh, very much full blown, right? Of course, you full cannot blown. afford to relax in Lagos because Lagos is, um, I mean, one of the fastest growing uh, cities I in the world. So this. you have to be on top of it all the time. It's a 24 hour job. Well, uh, thank mm -hmm. you for taking uh, mm -hmm. a bit of time out of that 24 hour schedule because I know you are being real. Um, it, there's no time you can't almost, you can't call a commissioner in Lagos State. Mm. There's no time. Yeah. Uh, that is the nature of it. Of mm. course, a lot depends on who is calling the commissioner, but still, <laughs> what you're saying is that the work is almost like 24 hours around Correct. the clock. Correct. Uh, thank you very much for coming on uh, being a, a motto show. Uh, Lagos State uh, Honorable Commissioner for Information and Strategy, uh, just telling us a bit about um, uh, what Lagos has done and is doing, and um, this no doubt will be standing them in very good stead when they go to the polls, uh, because the people will then judge uh, what they have seen, and indeed what anybody else is presenting, they'll be able to put it on a, you know, a balanced scale. Thank you very much, Blinga, for coming on. Thank you so much. Indeed, that's our program today. Please join us tomorrow for us, you know, a fresh edition. I'm Yori Folani. Bye-bye for now.